Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Monday, July 11th of 2022, and we've got lots to talk about. We've got some updates on Royal Caribbean, lots of updates on Princess, as well as some other helpful information for you. Alrighty, I want to start off with a headline here that is just brand new this morning. They say, COVID outbreak on Coral Princess among crew and passengers as cruise ships as the cruise ship docks in Brisbane. So right now, sailing on the Coral Princess are 2,300 passengers. Of that, there are 100 cases of COVID amongst the passengers and crew. So if you look at the percent of that, it's 0.2%. 0.43%, so not even a half of 1%. So my way of looking things, I don't think that it's a real outbreak. I honestly think that they just have COVID cases on board and are reporting on it. And of course the news, <laughs> they always call it an outbreak. So the person who is the Queenland, Queensland Health Minister said, this was always going to happen just like the rest of the community. So clearly they realize that this is going to be the situation situation moving forward. There is also a princess spokesperson there saying, you know, we try to let people know what's going on. We are following off the protocols and we are doing everything that we agreed to do before we started cruising again as far as the federal and state requirements there in Australia. So I just wanted to let you know about that so that when you see that headline, about an outbreak on the Coral Princess, you don't panic. I That certainly is 100 more cases than we wish there were. We wish that there were no COVID cases anywhere, but that's where we stand today. I really appreciated that in this story, they do not mention, it's, it. they do not talk about hospitalizations. No one is being rushed to the hospital in this group, anything like that. So I think that that is very promising as well. So the next story that I've got for you is a little bit similar to that, but it but um, let me just tell you about that. But this morning as I was going through the news, I noticed a headline that says, they were on a luxury cruise, then the coughing began, the ship that became a global COVID pariah. And so mind you, today is July 11th of 2022, and this article was just published today in The Guardian. And I thought it was so very interesting because the way they worded it, I thought, oh my goodness, we've got some more trouble on another ship. But no, it was talking about what happened with the ship clear back in March of 2020. And so I find it so interesting that the news has such a hard time letting go of cruise ships and COVID, even though we have had so much water under the bridge since then, so much has happened. Everyone has learned so much in every sector, quite frankly, about COVID. So I just wanted to point that out to you. I thought it was really interesting. And if you see that headline, don't think that we're having any big problems these days. Now, the next thing that I want to make sure that everyone is aware, I know that we've got some Let's Go family members who are booked to sail on Quantum of the Seas this year up there in Alaska. And as we talked about last week, Quantum of the Seas is having some engine problems. So Royal Caribbean announced that they have let all of their guests who will be on any sailings through August 15th, that departure date of 2022, that they are going to be missing cruising up to the Dawes Glacier so that they can be sure to hit all of the other ports and be able to have the part time that they expected in those ports. And so if any of you have received that official notification. I would love a copy of it, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone is aware of that in case it went to your spam or you're just a little bit behind on your email. So hopefully they'll be able to get that engine um, fixed. I know that they're waiting on parts they mentioned, and so hopefully that will be short-lived. The next thing that, I, well, and I want to make sure that everybody didn't miss my news last week that Royal, the Royal, I'm sorry, the Crown Princess seems to be doing a really good job. The week that I was in Alaska, which was um, two weeks ago today, uh, she hit all of her ports that week, and I thought that was really exciting. I don't know, but I think it was maybe the first week that she has not missed a port this summer, and so it looks like brighter days are ahead for our Crown Princess. 
Now, another quick thing about Royal Caribbean, as you all are maybe aware, and if not, whenever you are on a cruise and you book another cruise while you are still on that cruise, depending on which cruise line you are on, there are perks associated with doing that. For example, just now when I was on Holland America, they had a promo going that if you booked another cruise while you were on that sailing, then they would give you some onboard credit for that upcoming sailing. And the amount that they were going to give you was going to depend on how long the voyage was that you booked. Now, I know that Norwegian has their own perks. All of the cruise lines have a perk for doing that. But Royal Caribbean is upping their game a little bit. And I think it would be wonderful if the other cruise lines would follow suit. Royal Caribbean has announced that for um, they've got the Welcome Home promo and it is going to be valid on a new non-refundable booking that is made between July 1st and August 31st of 2022. So they're giving you a two-month window there within 30 days of sailing. That is huge. So if you're on a Royal Caribbean cruise and you go home during this time and you decide that you want to go ahead and book something, they're going to let you go ahead and have the perks that you would have just as though you had booked it on board. The Welcome Home promo gives you up to $600 of onboard credit per stateroom on sailings that are between July 1st of 2022, clear through sailings December 31st of 2024. So this is an awesome promo and they are letting you have 30 days after you get home if you decide you want to book something. So just be aware. So tell your travel agent or if you're doing it, make sure that you enter the code SAIL again. Just SAIL again all put together there, no spaces, um, so that you're sure to get that promo when you book. So I think that is great. I'm really excited to hear if any of the other cruise lines decide to follow suit on that because I think it's a wonderful plan. Now, um, the next thing that I wanted to let you know about, um, first of all, before I tell you, would you please consider subscribing to our channel? We would love to have you in our Let's Go family, and I think it's going to really help you stay up to date as well as provide you with lots of other information that you need. If you like to cruise, if you've got a cruise booked, or if you just like to think about cruising, this is the place for you. So first of all, we've had some questions that I posed last week about how much a one-day pass would be to the Enclave Thermal Suite on the, in the Lotus Spa on Princess Ships. So as I mentioned, when we were on the Regal Princess just a couple of weeks ago, um, almost a month ago now, sadly, um, we had the opportunity, if anybody wanted to book the Thermal Suite, you could book it for $149 for your seven-day sailing. And the way that they were regulating that due to COVID was they were allowing each person um, who was a Lotus Spa employee, six people to sign up. So that is how they kind of limited it. That individual person didn't have to sign them up. But for example, if they had 10 employees, they would be able to have 60 people using that thermal suite with the passes for the week. So I've had another Let's Go family member let us know that they were just on, um, when they were on the Discovery Princess for the inaugural sailing and it was $149 a week. Then they were on the Discovery Princess a little later and it was $169 a week. And on both of those sailings, people were not allowed to buy a day pass. And so based on that, I am thinking that maybe it depends a little bit based on which ship you are sailing on and where they are with how much capacity they've got. And so before we went on the um, Regal Princess, I noticed that I could have booked that when, when I was, um, so when you log in on princess.com and you go to that sailing and manage that booking across the top, it's like on board, under that you can book things for the spa. And at that point, I could have booked it. And so I was having, um, so I just wanted to let you know that check online and see if you can book it before you go, if you really want to be sure to have that. Otherwise, just go to the Lotus Spa right when you get on the ship and get that booked. And I would say if you just want it for one day, just ask when you get on board because that might be a little bit fluid, how many they're offering and what they're offering. So I'm sorry, I'm not more help with that. But I did want to let you know that in our live tonight, which is always on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern time here in the United States. Um, Gordon and I are going to talk a little bit more about the Lotus Spa and our experience when we were just on the Regal Princess. So if you are new around here, 
here, Gordon got a massage. And if you book the massage, like right the first day and have it done, you get like how many extra minutes, a lot of extra minutes, I want to say 20 or 40. It was a long time. So he really enjoyed that. So he's going to talk to you about all how that went. And then um, I got my hair done <laughs> on the Regal Princess. And I'll just let you know how that went. Um, they did a really good job. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Now we do have spas on different ships. On Holland America, it's called the Greenhouse Spa. And honestly, I didn't think to get in there until Tuesday, which was, I didn't think very far into the ceiling to book a hair appointment and they were all filled up. So it was no big deal to me, but I wanted to let you know if there is something that you really want to for sure have done when you get on, uh, while you're on board, make sure that you book it early. I should have been a little bit um, quicker to do that. So now we've just got a few updates on what's going on on some of the sailings that we've got going on on Princess Ships right now. I wanted to add that if any of you are sailing on any other cruise line, any other ships, we would really love to hear from you. We're trying to add a lot more and keep everyone up to date a little bit better on some other cruise lines as well as Princess. I am never leaving Princess, never leaving Princess. And so um, don't anybody worry about that. But we would like like to add in a few more more because I know that a lot of our Let's Go family members cruise Princess. They cruise um, lots of other cruise lines as well. And everyone, we're so happy to have you. So I wanted to let you all know that our Let's Go family member, Jim, they just were on, um, they went on the land tour and then they went on the Majestic Princess. They had a wonderful time. He said that they, um, did their test in Fairbanks so that they would, because they were there longer, they got tested there in Fairbanks, had a great time going to the lodges and doing everything with that. Then they got on the Majestic Princess and the Majestic Princess was only sailing at about a 60% capacity. So that sounds, um, he said that they had a wonderful time. And he also is the one who mentioned that they had gotten that test. And then when they got to the lodge, no one was asking them for their test. So they went up to the front desk and said, when do we show our negative test? And a specific person that they spoke to had never heard of anyone needing to be tested uh, to come to the lodge. And so I don't know um, how they're regulating that, but I would definitely say go ahead and be tested anyway. Now we've got Mike and they were just on the Grand Princess and they got to be on over uh, the 4th of July, but he said that they did, and they were also on a land tour. Um, he said that they used the EMED test before leaving for their trip. Princess did the complimentary test for them right there at the McKinley Lodge. Um, before they boarded the Grand Princess. He said it was absolutely beautiful weather. In Ketchikan, they had a parade on the 4th of July. And so it sounds like they had the same kind of weather just this last week that I had the week before um, when we were when I was on the um, Holland America's Koningsdam. So it'll be really interesting to see how the weather holds. This whole year, it sounds like people have pretty much had really good weather in Alaska, which is really unusual. So I think that's wonderful. The next update we have got is from Paul and he just barely just last week was on the Caribbean princess. I was really happy. It's his first cruise. Sounds like he had a wonderful time. He's like the rest of us. He got off the ship and was thinking of when he's going to go again, but he had a wonderful time on the Caribbean princess did not hear of any toilet problems. I know that's a funny thing to just throw out there, but if you're new around here, they have had some trouble, but it seems like it is all cleared up now. And so I thought that was wonderful. He did mention that while they were on the cruise, they had really high winds, like 65 mile an hour winds, which made the ship list a little bit. But, and I think I've seen some video of that on some Facebook pages, but he said that he slept through a lot of it and everything turned out just fine. So thank you, Paul, for letting us know how well things are going on the Caribbean Princess. Now we've heard from someone on the Royal Princess. She just barely boarded, um, Saturday. And she said at the very beginning, no masks were required, but she said, right the next day into the ship, um, they, um, 
they were told that masks are going to be required on board unless you are eating or drinking. And so it sounds like things are changing a little bit there on the Royal Princess. I'm not sure why, but um, we'll follow up and find out. The next thing that I wanted to let you know, and it's just kind of an outlier, but she mentioned it in her comment. And so I feel like I should put this out there just in case it applies to anyone in our Let's Go family. She had a friend traveling that was supposed to go on the cruise with them who, um, was a felon, had a felony a lot, like 40 years ago, she said in her past, and Canada wasn't going to let her in. And so this is just um, a shout out. If you have anything like that in your past, Google the countries that aren't going to let you in. Because I looked after she mentioned that Canada is one that will not let a felon in from any country, but also um, anyone with a felony charge in their history. But uh, there's a lot of other ones too. So I just felt like I should put that out there in case that helps anyone or anyone that you know, so that they don't book a cruise and think that they are going to go somewhere and then find out that they can't. And so just wanted to let you know. And then some testing updates. The Regal Prince Princess. We heard from a Let's Go family member that just barely got off in Barcelona and they were on two weeks and they did not have to do any testing halfway through. If you're not familiar, that has been very common to have to do testing partway through. When Gordon and I were on, our turnaround day was in Athens and we had to do testing. All we had to do was the day before go to be tested on board and we were feeling fine. They were just requiring everyone who was staying on for another week to be tested. And it sounds like maybe that requirement is gone. So I thought that that would be good news for anyone who was going to be sailing on Princess in the Mediterranean in the upcoming days. Let's see. And then the last thing that I wanted to let you know about the other evening in our um, live, I mentioned that while I was in Alaska, I had forgotten to take our binoculars with me. And so I wanted um, to look at things and in the end ended up downloading a, bin a binocular app on my phone. It's really cool. It's free. And if you want to um, zoom in more than is what allow, is allowed with the free part, then they will let you pay an upgraded amount to zoom in any further. But I was really pleased with how much I could zoom in for free. And it even lets you take photos. So you can use the app, you know, you hold up your um, phone and you look at things with it. And then if you see something you want to take a picture of, you can just click the button and take a photo with it. And my photos turned out actually pretty good. And so there are lots of binocular apps that come up. And so uh, Kathy asked, asked if I would show the one that I got. And so let me show you what it looks like in the app. And I think it will look the same here. Let me hold it way up. It's called the binocular super zoom camera. And it, like I said, it's free to download. I would bet it looks the same in the um, app store that they have for um, the Samsung phones as well, but I really like it and it was free. Of course, it's not as good as real binoculars, but it's got that lovely perk that you can go ahead and take a photo with it, which my binoculars are not that fancy. So, but, but you know what I have done before? I have held binoculars up to my camera and taken a picture that way and they've actually turned out better than you would expect, but that's really not what um, I would recommend if you really want to get a lot of close-up photos. But anyway, so there's, there's your binocular app for you if you would like to go ahead and get that. So if any of you have any questions about anything, oh, and you know what? I wanted to ask one other things. So in the comments, I would not only like to hear from you about any ships you've been on or any updates that you've got for us, but also tell me what is on your bucket list these days. I've been thinking an awful lot about my bucket list and I'm thinking I'm rearranging a few things on my schedule so that I can go to a few bucket list places uh, sooner than later because you never know what life holds or what um, um, things in the world hold to be able to travel places. So tell me all what your bucket list places are that you're thinking of going sooner, later, what you've got in mind. I would really like to hear about that. So I will be talking to you all again really soon. Oh, and you know what? If you appreciate this video, would you please give these this video an update? Sorry, a thumbs up because that really does help us. I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>